cooperation. Today we're so honored. To, today we're so honored to have Melissa here to give us some basic math knowledge behind Zcash. Now let's welcome Melissa. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Okay, uh, Melissa, here you go. Okay, so can you hear me well? Everything is right. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay, so um, hi everyone, I'm Milica from Serbia and I'm a ZK educator and basically what I do is um, sharing my knowledge path publicly, which is uh, why I'm invited here on uh, behalf of uh, Adapt Learning and thank you Kelly very much. So uh, let me see if we can use the whiteboards um, from Zoom so that I can um, write and draw because that's what I like making uh, draws so let's see uh, okay yeah let me know if you see my whiteboard uh, so can you can you see my whiteboard? Yes, very clearly. Okay, okay. So let's try one of my favorite examples of Alibaba K. So um, usually we have um, someone called Alice and Bob as actors. So that's what we have uh, usually in cryptography. The two of those they're interacting. And uh, for the sake of uh, referring to them as sometimes as A and B, we call them Alice and Bob. So um, Alice and Bob uh, are making um, some sort of a game uh, where Alice proves to the Bob. So she's sort of a prover that uh, Bob, uh, that she has a key to the secret door and the cave. So, um, I'm starting usually when I when I'm explaining zero knowledge. I'm usually starting with this uh, more simple examples before we dive into more math, uh, because I want uh, this everyone is on the same path uh, and on the on the you know on the same page. So let's um, try to draw a path on on uh, Alibaba K. So yeah, I'm not really the best drawer. <laughs> but uh, let's say that this is the K and we have some road inside and person that's standing somewhere here and entering the cave and let's say standing here cannot see the person uh, that entered the cave already and there are some secret doors here, okay. So can you imagine that there is some secret door here that um, there is a key as well? And uh, Bob has no key. So Bob has no key. But Alice, Alice claims she has a key indeed. So um, Alice gets into, let's, let's say that this is Alice. Alice gets into the cave and maybe she's here. And uh, Bob is coming and Bob wants to know if Alice has the key, but Alice will not show the key to the Bob. She will prove that she has the key indeed if Alice takes a random pathway back to Bob or that Bob orders the path to, to Alice. For example, if Alice is hiding, I don't know, somewhere here, Bob obviously cannot see her. So let's say this is Bob. Bob cannot see where Alice is. But let's say, let's let's call it left path and right path. So let's say Bob said like, hey, Alice, can you hear me? And Alice says, yeah, yeah I can hear you, Bob. And um, uh, Bob said like, Alice, take the left path. I want you to take the left path. And uh, maybe Alice is here. 
and uh, if she indeed has the key, she is able to pass the secret door and take the left path. And then she comes to Bob like, yeah, you see, I have the key. I proved this to you. And Bob said like, mm, I'm still not convinced. Maybe you were accidentally uh, on, on, on the left side of the door. And uh, I want to once again to go into the cave and uh, take uh, some other paths. So sometimes he would say left, he would say right. And uh, if, if uh, Alice indeed has the key, she would, um, she would uh, be able to, to cross around the cave. So um, that was, uh, that was the, the idea uh, that uh, Bob uh, actually proved every time because he saw Alice he saw the proof that uh, that she's there, like she was able to pass to pass the gate. Uh, okay, and um, uh, let's say uh, that um, let's say that there there was some uh, other example as well, and uh, I didn't have uh, the balls as uh, that is the usual example, but I do have arrows. So do you still see me? Uh, in front of the camera. Let's go to chat to see what people say. So let's move from the whiteboard to to um, my camera. Can you guys see me? Oh, yes. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. So you see that I'm holding arrows of different colors. All right, and um, let's say I'm colorblind. I cannot tell the difference between these two objects. Uh, if I'm a colorblind person, to me, they are exactly physically the same, uh, but um, there is probably some difference uh, that I colorblind person cannot tell. And if you are a person that can tell the differences between the colors, then you would always tell me the difference for example, I can have them behind my back and then switching them. And you don't know, like if I uh, took the, the red arrow um, with my right hand and then switching them behind my back and tell you, you and ask you like, which is this color? And if you repeat, sorry, <laughs> and if you repeat that this is red again, I would definitely say that you cannot have difference between it. You cannot make difference between these, these two objects. But um, yeah, if you can tell the difference, and I guess many of you in this call can, uh, you will always be able to tell me if I switch them or if I don't, uh, I might trick you. And um, you will always tell me like, aha, uh -huh, this, this, is, this is definitely red. And I can show you this and you can tell, yeah, yeah. This is green. So you will always be able to tell me that there is some sort of difference, which I, as a colorblinded uh, verifier, cannot tell. So how do I verify? So if I switch them behind my back, like every time or every other time, I would say like, mm, I switch them and they notice the difference. This is good. Like, must be that they're not a liar. So if we switch to the whiteboard and yeah by the way if someone wants to try try with the game or here on the call i'll be happy uh to to play the prover and the verifier game if there are some volunteers yeah um so um let's say that uh let's please switch to the whiteboard i want uh, to explain the percentages behind uh, these interactive proofs. So there are like two types, they're interactive and non-interactive proofs. Um, so uh, let's go back to the whiteboard and let's say like first time, if you are not an honest verifier, you will have like 50% chance that you will, uh, that you would, um, uh, that you would convince me and every time there's less and less chance that you will be so, so lucky that you will always uh, be able to convince me. 
uh, that, you, that you can differentiate between the colors. So this is how it looks like. So first time there is half, half uh, so there is like um, half chance, like that you would uh, convince me that something is, uh, that some statement that is false is true. And uh, next time, so it's a quarter, right? So it's quarter, like if we have, uh, if we do this two times, it's quarter, right? Sorry for the bad line. If we do this three times, it's, um, it's uh, one through eight. And uh, if we do this 10 times, so what would it be? It would be uh, one divided by two to the, to the power of 10, which is one through 2,000 and, uh, sorry. Yeah, it's it's not 2,000, it's uh, rather, uh, so let me see. Okay, okay. It's one through 1,000 and 24, which correlates to somewhere 0.1%. So something like it. So it's even less because it's not one divided by 1000. So it's less than 0.1%. Um, if we repeat this experiment uh, 10 times. So you can imagine like what happens uh, after repeating a uh, hundred times. So it's less and less every time we repeat it, the, the, it halves. So um, the, these were like, this were the example of interactive um, zero knowledge proofs because uh, I would, for example, not, would not be able to tell that uh, you can make a difference uh, between the, the, the colors and uh, you you will you would uh, say Bob did not see the key uh, that Alice had to open the secret door, and uh, yeah, so there are, there are others um, as well. There are uh, interactive ones which are usually um, so the most that there is uh, out there like there are zk snarks and zk starks, and um, basically. Uh, if we take uh, the popular term of uh, ZK VMs, usually if you scratch under the surface or pretty much any ZK VM nowadays, you would see uh, that it's powered by either ZK Snark or ZK Stark. And um, in the future, I would, I'll be creating a lesson on, on that as well. But uh, for now, um, I can tell that, uh, for example, even the ZK Snarks are having uh, smaller proofs and uh, are faster. We have ZK Starks that have no trusted setup and that are for now quantum proof. Uh, we always say cryptography for now because, you know, give it a time and something will be breakable in the future. <laughs> so there is nothing that's uh, practically guaranteed uh, for good and forever. Um, so, um, what else is there to, to say uh, about uh, basing things behind ZKs is possibly the principles behind it. So there are like three principles behind ZKs and their completeness soundness and zero knowledge. So I will write them uh, here. So let me see. Yeah, cool. This can move. Cool. So it's completeness. Yeah, so first one is completeness. So that means that um, if the statement is true, an honest verifier will be able to convince the prover on this statement. So if something is true, it will always be true. And an honest verifier will be always able to convince the prover that something is true indeed. So, um, if that is not the case, we don't have the completeness. So the second thing is um, second thing is soundness. So 
So the soundness, what does that mean? So the soundness means uh, the following, that if the statement is, for example, false, that uh, no cheating mechanism, uh, no cheating prover can convince an honest verifier that the statement is true. Except for the very small percentage, like we had, like we had here, like that is uh, zero point one and less and less. And so let's say that we have um, hundred rounds of those. It would be almost impossible because we would have uh, uh, one divided by two, two to the power of hundred, and that's like insanely big number. And um, so the third one is zero knowledge. So what does that mean? It means that you, um, the verifier does not reveal uh, uh, its, its uh, knowledge. So um, the prover had zero knowledge on how the verified and how the verifier knew something. So you never reveal your, your uh, secret, for example, uh, like um, that the Alice, she never revealed her key to Bob, right? So Alice kept her, he, her key to herself and that contributes to the zero knowledge. And um, yes, so if, you guys have any sort of questions and um, if you do not uh, uh, if you do not rem if you cannot come with some uh, now you can always refer to my twitter uh, zerax militsa is the handle and i'll be happy to to um, write on this topic or on to the topic that you propose and um, yeah, for, for the next lesson, I'm planning on uh, explaining a model arithmetic and um, so we'll be announcing when that will be on air as well. Okay, is there someone has questions? Oh, if there's no, and um... Very thank you, Monica, uh, for give for give us a very wonderful class, uh, lesson. Thank you, Stan. Thank you, Dad, for having me. Okay, I'll stop the recording. <laughs>